Tony Robles. I'm with Manila Town Heritage Foundation and also with Senior and Disability Action. And there's protests going on here today uh, over the uh, eviction of Iris, uh, who is a 100-year-old woman. Why would, is this happening in San Francisco when it could lead to the death of her? Well, you know, the, uh, the out-of-control uh, real estate speculation where uh, nothing, nothing matters but profit, you know. Um, uh, an appeal was going to be filed today. Uh, the sheriff's department, sheriff's office was notified. They knew that an appeal uh, was going to be filed. Uh, they went ahead and did it anyway. Um, uh, Iris went out, I guess it was to a uh, lunch program, senior lunch program. Upon her arrival, uh, locks were changed. Uh, her wheelchair is in her residence, her medicines are there, and you know, she, and she's scared and frightened. Uh, this reeks of, 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 of irony. Uh, you know, this year is the 40th anniversary of the evictions of the elders of the I Hotel. And it's, uh, it's, really, it's really hitting a chord. Um, you know, you have a woman here who, who fought her, her case in the court and won. Her landlord takes her back to court and sues for his court costs. The judge rules in his favor. So, in essence, she's being asked to pay $180,000 for her own eviction. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's, it just... It just boggles, really. The well, you have the Hennessy, the the new sheriff, who apparently they were they were informed that uh, they didn't allow an appeal, which it could have been. And you have uh, David Chu, you have uh, uh, Weiner, Scott Weiner here. I mean, there's an emergency situation for seniors, for many people in the Bay Area. Where are these politicians uh, as far as emergency and and stopping these uh, evictions that will kill people? You know that is. You know, we're seeing more and more seniors that, uh, you know, are ending up homeless. Uh, the shelters uh, are full. There are only 10 shelter beds in the city that are specific to seniors. But seniors should not be living uh, in shelters, you know. Uh, they, they work long enough to, to live comfortably with uh, a certain degree of dignity. And uh, that's, that's not happening in San Francisco. I think San Francisco is is indicative of what's going wrong with our what's what's wrong really uh, in our in our economic system uh, this is a perfect example of how the system uh, is designed to to go off the pier and in free fall and that's that's where it is right now that's where it is because you know the investors and the money people they are only responsible to their investors and and to um, and to themselves there's no social um, there's no social aspect. There's no. There's, there's no sense of, um, of of society and a shared responsibility. San Francisco is is emblematic uh, in in this, and we say, hey, we don't have representation. There's no emergency for Ed Lee and the and the billionaires who really run San Francisco. They're doing well. Apparently. Yeah, ex exactly. <laughs> expected that the sheriff would not do it this quickly. There was net, no indication that the sheriff would do it this quickly. They have till April 12th. Why today? You know, all I can guess is that the sheriff wanted to avoid this, wanted to avoid protests, because they knew we would be out there when they came and we would protest. And I think they were trying to avoid the negative publicity. Well, guess what, Vicki Hennessy? We're going to give you so much negative publicity that you'll never forget it. Can you talk a little bit about some of the signs that you're holding? Yes. Well, we feel that this is elder abuse. Absolutely elder abuse. How do you do this to a hundred year old? I mean, think of that. People need to understand 100 years old. How do you do that to somebody who's a hundred years old? This woman, her whole family used to live in that neighborhood back when it was an African-American neighborhood. She watched her whole family get displaced from this neighborhood as African-Americans were pushed out of that neighborhood. And now she gets pushed out? This, this is not right. How did that confrontation go when the sheriff came out? Well, it was very heated, of course. 
because the sheriff was trying in her own way to justify what, what she had done. But there is no justification, and none of us out here were buying any justification for this. So it, it got very heated. Yes, we were chanting shame at her, and, you know, she just stood there and <laughs> she responded in very, I, I think, very lame ways. You know, she said, well, the, you know, there's a court order. Well, you know, the reality is the sheriffs have discretion. There is some discretion, you know. Um, I, I, I'm not a lawyer, so I don't know exactly what all that discretion is, but I know from Ross Mercurini, I've, I've been doing this work for almost 20 years. You know, I've dealt with, uh, with the first Sheriff Hennessy, I've dealt with Mercurini. Those sheriffs would work with the activists. They would work with us. They, would, they understood that in a case like this where you have a 100-year-old person, that you've got to exercise some discretion. You don't just go in there and do what they did today. I mean, what do they expect? She's not home. So she comes home to what? Her lock changed? What do they think that's going to do to her? You know, I just don't get what Vicki Hennessy is thinking. Moving forward, what do you hope happens? I mean, if she's been evicted, do you hope they take this well, back? Do you, I mean, what's next for all of you? Well, we're hoping that her lawyer can go into court and do something. Again, I'm not a lawyer. I don't know what the possibilities are, but I, I've heard that there might be some way to force them to you know, let her back in. I don't know. I don't know if that's true. You probably need to talk to her lawyer. Right. I, I can You're give you his number. We, we, we are not going to let go of this, and we are not, not going to let Sheriff Hennessy forget that she's done this. And, you know, I, I have to wonder about somebody who doesn't care that their legacy is going to be that they evicted a 100-year-old woman. Every time people Google Hennessy's name, I am hoping that what comes up is that she evicted a 100-year-old woman. That's going to be her legacy, and you know what? She deserves it. I think if this city had the will, this city could do something more than it's doing. Absolutely. I mean, when Gavin Newsom wanted gay marriage, he defied state law, federal law, everything, and he did it, which was a good thing. I'm not knocking that. But <clears throat> it seems like the, po the politicians we have now aren't willing to do that kind of, 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 of action where they really challenge the system. And we've got to challenge the system. The system is wrong from the get-go, from the ground up. This system is wrong. Could there be an eviction moratorium, an emergency eviction moratorium? I mean, it seems like a 100-year-old woman, they would be able to stop something like that. You would think so, right? I mean, we're not dealing with my, my, my reality or my moral compass. We're dealing with their moral compass. So you need to really challenge them, not me, because I'm out here fighting to stop well, these. You have a David Chu. You have Scott Weiner. You have these people in the legislature. What are they doing about it? They just had a meeting in San Francisco to talk about the housing crisis. Was this brought up at the meeting? I don't know because I didn't go because I figured it would be a lot of blah, 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 blah. So I didn't go. So you don't have faith that these people are going to do anything? No, I don't. I don't because the root of the problem is capitalism. Let's be real. Housing is a commodity. It should not be a commodity. That's how we get stuck with situations like this because housing is a commodity. The motive here has been the condo convert her place and increase the value. The value goes up substantially of her apartment and all the other apartments in that building if they either get her out or get force her to sign some kind of uh, um, condo conversion papers that are not to her best and not in her best interest that's what that's what's at the core of this fight is money greed profits so again we're stuck with housing is a commodity people are going to want to make money off it the casualties are going to be people like iris canada who get in the way of their profits we got to stop that from happening and the way we stop it is by going to the root of the problem, which is that housing is a commodity instead of a human right. I, I, I know I may sound like a crazy idealist, but I think, you know. People are dying. People are dying. People are dying. Uh, the 97-year-old woman in Burlingame died during her eviction. She wasn't the only one. There have been cases all over the country where elders have died when they were evicted. You think that's a crime? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. But they define the crimes. I don't. You know, if I defined crime, it would be a lot different. The world would be a lot different. But I don't. But you can save it in your phone and call yes. them later. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, who wants to start? Start on that end and
There's another one. Carolyn Radich. Are you ready? She's also the landlord. There's three landlords here. It's 802 359 4070.